Hi everyone, welcome to another Stackland Studio Experience. Today in this video, I'm gonna be doing an unboxing slash build log. And holy crap, gotta start with the companies that I wanna thank. Thank you, SanDisk, for sending me out the SSD. This will be my first PCIe M.2 SSD, which I am so excited for. I hope that they sent me the right one, because I hope that I talk to someone else and them correctly. I really hope I did. And then, of course, we have our old buddies over at Crucial who sent us over the memory upgrade kit. And then, uh, MSI hit me up. Welcome to the future, bitches. MSI has hit me up with the GP62 MVR. And this is a gaming laptop that we are going to be unboxing, reviewing, and talking about. Or not reviewing right now, but reviewing down in the future. But anyway, let's roll the intro so that I can get into this. All right, so I've already cut it open uh, because had to make sure that everything was in here. So right on the top, holy crap, right on the top is the laptop, but we will set that off to the side for right now. My God, it is light in comparison to my other laptop. It almost feels like the Stealth Pro, honestly. Okay, so setting that off to the side. In this pocket, we have the power cord. Seriously, MSI. And then in this pocket, we have the power brick. Okay, so what's in the middle? I think documentation should have been in here, but I'm just gonna close this and move on with the laptop because apparently MSI forgot to uh, put in the documentation into that. But that's fine. There's always online documentation. So, uh, we're actually going to be repasting and repadding this laptop entirely. I have my thermal paste here, and I have my thermal pads out behind the camera, but I'll move the camera so you guys can actually see the upgrade process and all of that. But you guys want to see the laptop. So, let me go ahead and pull this out. Holy crap, this thing is beautiful. Like, it's so... It's so thin. I honestly wasn't expecting it to be so thin. So over here we have, uh, on this side, you have your separate audio ports, your uh, USB Type-C, which this is uh, Thunderbolt, com Thunderbolt capable, as that's what they told me. So we'll, we'll, I won't be able to personally figure that out, but uh, hopefully I can talk to someone who has an eGPU and get them to send that to me so that I can test that out, actually. Um, we have the mini display port, uh, or sorry, moving forward, we have the USB, and then mini display port, HDMI, and then our other USB 3.0, and our Ethernet, and that fills out this side, along with our Kensington lock right there. On the back, we have two heat sinks going out, and then on this side, we have, what do we have on this side? Looks like USB 2.0. So USB 2.0, uh, the SD, a full SD card reader, which is, thank God. And then, of course, we have the power cable. Now, the first thing I noticed about this laptop is, it is a fingerprint magnet. So if you guys get a chance to get one of these, and I will leave a link in the video's description, uh, also make sure to get a skin on this. So if I open it up, it has a nice little shield for the bottom for some reason. Thank you, MSI, for shielding that one part. Oh, I see, it's for the webcam. Uh, let's go ahead and get the webcam sticker <laughs> off. Come on. There we go. Thank you. All right, so this has the Core i7. Uh, this is the 60... 700K, or 6700HQ, my bad, has the HQ in it. 
and it has a one terabyte uh, hard disk drive in it. The buttons feel really nice in comparison to the old one that I used to have. Um, but yeah, it's an HQ series and it has a uh, Steel Series keyboard, as always. Feels wonderful. Um, buttons are a little buttons are a little iffy. Um, but, you know. Can't expect much from a laptop, to be honest. Uh, but this is the budget end laptop. And that's the reason that they wanted to send it to me because I didn't want something fancy. I wanted something that anyone can use. And I think I actually figured out why. There we go. Okay, so now I have full brightness and full motion control. There we go. So, as you can see, it, it, the, the hard drive is running at normal hard drive speed. Um, so, that, that's a problem because uh, hard drive speed doesn't work for me. That's why SanDisk hooked us up and I can hook you up with it in the link in the video's description. Uh, also, the memory upgrade kit. But this laptop only costs $900 out of the box. Which blew my mind away because this laptop is VR ready. It has eight gigabytes of memory with one gig of one stick free. And on top of that, it has an i7. It has, you know, all of your basic elements. It has Windows 10 Home already installed. It is essentially ready for you. But that startup was painfully slow. Let's go ahead and power it off. Don't do that. It's, it's bad for the computer. But then we're going to close it. Seriously, the, 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 uh, the hinge is nice and tough. But, I mean, I don't mind that. But it does feel very nice just to close it. So beautiful. So let me go ahead, flip this over, uh, grab my thermal paste and my... Uh, or I have my thermal paste, I need my thermal pads, and get this camera moved. All right, so I am back now, and I have about 15 million cables. So let's go ahead and start with punching through the first sticker. Well, the only sticker that we have to punch through. And as always, MSI recommends to send them the product to un to tamper with, but most of the time they will not, you know, castrate you if you uh, if you end up tearing this open. It is a pretty thin sticker after all, so you're not prob you're probably not going to get castrated, but you know, who am I to say what they'll do? Anyway. Let's enter time-lapse mode, and yeah. All right, so we are now in. Holy crap. So it it's surprising, but it looks very different from the other model. So let's go ahead and uh, I guess upgrade the first thing, which would be the RAM, uh, which as you can see right here only has one stick in and it is the Kingston uh, and their numbers are so freaking confusing. But if you want the exact version, uh, Kingston is the one that you have to go with. Again, my buddies at Crucial set me up, so I will link their product in the video's description. So, and then of course we have our 
SSD, which is also very, very easy to install. And all you gotta do is slide it in, and there's no uh, screw. So let me go and find a uh, screw for that. Unless, wait a minute. Does the case, is the case the screw holder? No, no. There's no screw that would go there. So let me go find a screw out of my collection that I have. Also, before we start uh, taking these off, and you should always do this before you do anything. Always make sure to take out your battery because that is a major no-no. Uh, so remember, always take off the battery before you start tinkering. So yeah, anyway, uh, I'll be right back. All right, so I found the world's probably tiniest screw and it fits. That's mostly what I'm worried about is that it fits and that it doesn't, like, I'm not really worried about it, but it fits, it's not too tight. So let's go ahead and continue to uh, break off, or not break off, uh, take off all of the other screws for the heating system. So let's go ahead and unplug that and unplug this one, yep. There we go. There's that and that. So now we can successfully remove, hopefully, the uh, cooling system. I'll go ahead and remove the fan screws first simply so that I can deal with them and I don't have to worry about anything. All right, there we go. So our thermal pads and our thermal paste are now available so that we can see where we have to put thermal pads and where we have to put thermal paste. I'm repasting and repadding pretty much everything simply because I don't trust, and I know that's very bad, but I don't trust the company to have padded everything correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repad everything and make sure that it is perfect for me because I'm also going to underclock the CPU and it just stuck to my hand so I couldn't throw it properly. But I'm going to underclock the CPU so that I can actually get a little bit more performance out of it, uh, or I guess more performance out of the battery, I guess I should say. So wash off that with a good old alcohol swab because I don't have alcohol for some reason. 
I know I had some laying around somewhere, but apparently now I do not have any. So, put that over there, and then we will hit it with some paper towel. So in the case that this is your first time ever looking into a uh, laptop, welcome. Uh, usually the larger chip, which is this one here, uh, usually this will be your GPU, which in this case uh, you can't really see it, but it says NVIDIA on it, right? Yep, NVIDIA. And this one, which is unlabeled, will be your CPU. This is your uh, Intel Core i7. So I guess let's go ahead and uh, start measuring out what we need to put down. And uh, yeah, we'll start cutting and this will be fun. And I almost, I almost stabbed my motherboard. Oh boy. All right, so coming out of that time-lapse mode with now gray fingers. If you ever have an easier way to do that, do so because you will be cleaning thermal grease off of your hand for a month. Or not really a month, but you get my point. Because even with alcohol, it's not really coming off. So, the reason I laid it on so thick is because these CPUs, they don't really get that hot, but I want to make sure that they are covered for a while. 
because I don't want to have to pull this apart in, uh, you know, a month. And, you know, put it, you know, pull it back apart and redo this. So essentially just line up all the holes, push down, and then put all of your screws back in. Uh, again, start with your corners and attempt to put force, equal force. So try pushing it on the middle of the CPU. And then screwing in all sides. It's a little harder. Uh, than taking it apart, but once you've done it a few times, you'll get used to it. Uh, but yeah, so we've repadded pretty much everything, and uh, you'll notice that I even repadded over here. Now, you might be asking, well, Joe, why did you do that? That wasn't padded to begin with. Uh, should you have left it unpadded? I personally like thinking that the more pads would be better. Um, but of course, to each their own. So if you just wish to repad the, uh, the areas around the CPU and GPU for the MOSFETs and the power delivery system over there, then you do you, my friend. I will not stop you. But this is how I am doing mine because I do feel that the extra thermal pads will make it a little bit safer for my computer. Now, will what I just done break any warranties? You might be asking. Again, as I said in the beginning of this, don't trust me. Ask MSI yourself because when you buy these products from them, uh, they obviously come with a warranty. So ask MSI yourself if by you repasting and repadding uh, this notebook, if that will in turn hurt your return status as well as other things like that. Because you want to make sure to ask them these questions, not me, because I am not a authorized representative from them. I simply take apart this because in my experience, the thermal pads and thermal paste don't really go so well with the default con config. So again, this is my personal experience talking, not what I highly recommend doing. Obviously, I always recommend contacting the company in question first, whether it be, you know, MSI or, you know, Dell for, uh, whether it be MSI or Dell for their gaming laptops, uh, or any laptops at all, always contact the manufacturer. Do not trust anything that you read or uh, that's told to you from a professional, uh, whether it be a reviewer or just a technician, always contact the company first. Never rip this open at your, you know, at your leisure because that could always bite you in the rear in the, in the long run. So uh, while I've been talking, <laughs> uh, simply been screwing these down as tight as I can and then just kind of pushing on the thermal pads, getting them nice and set so that all of that is set in place. We went through quite a bit of uh, thermal pad and let's go ahead and slide the battery. Take the, take the uh, slide the battery back into place and then we will take the screw and screw it in. And then bada bang, bada boom, you are done upgrading and repasting your MSI laptop. So let me go ahead, 
snap, 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 and get the uh, installer, and I will reinstall Windows on this drive, and then we should be up and running. I unfortunately do not have my DisplayPort, or sorry, mini DisplayPort to uh, DisplayPort cable just yet, so I'll have to get that and before I can use my 1440p monitor. But for right now, we have this. You just need to make sure that all of these parts are closed. Just make sure, snap them all down, all the clips. And then you're good to go. That one actually just popped into place. Um, you're good to go. Take your screwdriver and then we will screw them all back in. So again, time lapse. So after, through the magic of video editing and through three, no, four calls to Microsoft, finally got this thing upgraded to Windows 10 Pro and got it activated properly. Holy crap, it's story time. So whenever you're activating Windows, now it pulls your activation codes and keys from your account. So other computers that you may have updated from Windows 7 or keys that you have activated in the past. All of that is stored on your Microsoft account. Well, when you first connect on a laptop, it doesn't ask for your product key. It just has you log in. But on a desktop, it does have you enter that product key. And that's what was confusing for me because it didn't ask me for that product key. And I don't know why. Um, so long story short, got it registered through a fake key that upgraded the software to Pro. And then I could finally activate it using my actual key. It was a long, difficult, and I ended up having to talk to Mr. Roboto, who ended up activating my software for me. And I now have the activation product key so that I can never have to call him again. Because it's a love-hate relationship between me and Mr. Roboto from Microsoft. So, all last night and this morning, I've been running through and reinstalling, setting everything up and getting everything perfect. Now, you may have noticed in the video that it was very tiny and very uh, fuzzy, was when I, how I would describe it. Well, Windows sets the recommended default for uh, the exposure, or not exposure, but the uh, sizing option, uh, to 125%. I hate that because this is what it's supposed to look like. It's a 1080p screen so it's supposed to be this small. I get that. That's what I wanted. That's why I paid for a 1080p screen. If I wanted, you know, the bigger screen, I would have paid for a 720p screen. So that kind of pisses me off that they went and Microsoft does that by default. 
Um, but ended up getting the video shadow play or the GeForce experience. All that, all my editing and recording software, all my applications, everything is now installed. Minus my games, which are still on my old drive, which I have to wait for. Which that will be part two is the final setup and everything. Um, but I wanted to get this part finished so that you guys can see uh, the difference that a SanDisk SSD makes. Now this is the X400, I, I believe. It's been a while since I had that email conversation with SanDisk. But let's go ahead and this is a worst case scenario for the SSD because A, I have to log in with a pin. B, I am starting, you know, the exact same. It has startup applications, and as you can see from my tray, there's a lot of them. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Let me just zoom, zoom in by uh, moving the tripod there. Uh, so you can see there's a bunch of applications that start up by default on Windows. So that, like the SSD, and there's only 23% of the battery remaining. So we are going to do a, uh, a cold boot, which the difference between a warm boot and a cold boot is that a warm boot is essentially just a restart where it boots up from uh, it going off from Windows and then just restarts or any operating system. A cold boot is where it stays off for about 10 seconds and then it'll power back on. So let me go ahead and shut it down. Everything is still in pounds, by the way. I have to change that. So it goes off extremely quick. Now it's gonna, now it's gonna make a liar out of me because, you know, I'm recording. Okay, so now it is off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out so it doesn't boot from the USB. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer as soon as I hit this button. So, now. Same boot screen that we had before, but we're all ready to the login screen. So let me go ahead and log in. I already have access to my desktop, and as soon as all of my icons pop up, I will stop the timer, but it's still going because I really want this SSD to lose because I want I wanted to prove me wrong that buying an SSD is a bad investment. But actually I believe nope, nope, there's two more that I think need to pop up. Or is it done? Is it done? Yeah, it is done. It finished. As you can tell, a lot quicker than the uh, than the hard drive. Now I'm still leaving the hard drive in there for mass storage, but frankly, you don't need the hard drive. Honestly, the hard drive you could just honestly throw away. And then if I plug this in, I can enable the speed shift technology and have it go to sport. That essentially overclocks my CPU and allows me to overclock the CPU. Uh, I think it's like uh, 200 maybe megahertz? I, I can't remember right off the top of my head. But yeah, this is so far, a great laptop. It has the same issue that I've always had with laptop uh, trackpads. Um, I don't know why, but whenever I move, uh, sometimes like I can be sitting still, and then all of a sudden, the cursor will start going across the screen. I'll mention that in my full review. Hopefully that it can be fixed with a firmware update or something like that. 
but I doubt that it will ever be fixed because I had this issue with my last Leopard Pro that I had that had the GTX 950M. No, 960M. Yeah, 960M. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you want to buy this laptop, the, uh, cor the Crucial Memory, or the SanDisk SSD, check the links in the video's description. You can make this product your own. Now, if you don't want to get inside of it, if you don't want to undervolt and all of that, and yes, I did, I undervolted this uh, by uh, 0 0.05. Yeah, by, fi by 50 millivolts is what I done. I undervolted it by 50 millivolts so that it, um, it doesn't overclock as much, but at the same time, it stays cooler. Um, I mean, it's not much of a difference, but as far as the cooling and the battery life goes, it's a big difference for me. Um, so if you don't want to get your hands dirty and, you know, have to pull apart the computer uh, to install the memory and all of that, potentially voiding your warranty and all of that, I will also leave a link to the already upgraded version of this computer. So you can already buy a 16 gigabyte model. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, but honestly, this is a great laptop for the price because it offers about triple the performance of a 1050 or 1050 Ti. Things that, you know, Dell and Acer are putting out that MSI is blowing out of the water and it's a decent laptop. I mean, sure, it has kind of shite viewing angles, but, and you, that's just the sample there. Um, but I mean, you can't expect much from, and I'll just do the screen flex, and the chassis flex is reasonable. The screen flex is completely unacceptable, though, um, because this is a lot of screen flex. So, but in the thin form factor that it is, it doesn't come with a DVD drive, which is wonderful, and they should have used that space for more battery. I can't say enough how much they should have used that space for more battery, because this, like this whole area right here, is nothing but blank, right? Um, yeah, because this is the hard drive over here. I think. No, this is the hard drive here. This is the blank space. Oh, wait. No, this is the blank space. Jesus. Holy crap. Okay. Over here, all of this is just blank space. There's just a PCB there. If they would have made a custom PCB, cut this area out, put another battery there where the, you know, the DVD was. I, again, either side, I can't remember. But if they would have put, you know, an extra hunk of battery in there, if they weren't afraid of, you know, running a couple extra, you know, circuits, this, this computer, hands down, would be the best for the budget. Um, but the battery life so far right now is the exact same as the predecessor. So it kind of sucks as far as that goes. But I like the predecessors. So it's perfectly fine. I'm, I don't, I'm not paid to say this from a standpoint of you have to pay or we won't, you know, or we'll take the laptop back. I'm not paid to do that. I'm simply stating what, I, what I, my opinions are. I bought with my own money the other Leopard Pro. And some of the issues that I saw with that product are in this product. And those products were about three years apart. So shouldn't have been fixed by now? I, I, I It's just kind of confusing on why it, why it does that. But it is cool that you can easily switch between the different eco modes as far as gaming or whatnot. You can turn off your webcam, which is actually really cool. 
you can change pretty much everything with keyboard shortcuts once you install all of the MSI software. Again, if you don't want to go through all that junk, you can just buy the upgraded model that's already upgraded and deal with that. Um, but I'm not gonna complain. It, it works, it works well, but there's some issues that I hopefully will get used to, like the start and function buttons. Seriously, MSI, who does this? Who the fuck does this? The function button is over here, like right there, and then the start button is over here. And they aren't interchangeable unless you go through the BIOS and flip them. Like they can't both be used for function buttons or both used for start buttons. You can't like do a, you know, uh, like control function and it pop up the start menu. You can't do that. You either have this is your start button or this is your start button, but to change that you have to go through the BIOS. And that blows. It does suck, you know, it does suck that I was shipped a unit that has slower memory, so it only, the memory that I have in here is dual channel DDR4-2133, uh, but it does support up to DDR4-L, obviously, um, 2400. I found that out in the BIOS, and it does have apparently something called a security boot feature. So whatever that means, I don't know if that means that it has Windows Hello um, or something like that, but again, I will talk more about that all in the full review. Um, but yeah, so far, it's a decent laptop. Um, it definitely needs an SSD to even be usable. But this video has gone on way too long. I'm sorry if you guys have already tuned out. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I hopefully will catch you all next time.